So how are we all doing? Fine. Yeah. It's brilliant to be back here. And I think the last time I came down to Nova Scotia was about six months ago, and we sang Happy Birthday, Happy 80th Birthday to Jim McLean. And then we, we all sang uh, Massacre of Glencoe. We sent it to Jim. Jim loved the fact that we were remembering him and singing his songs here back home. Jim's been living in London for decades, and he sends his very best wishes tonight. So what I'm doing tonight is, this is basically a brand new set for me. I've never done anything like this before. I'm doing songs that all come from the, the circle that was Morris Blythman and his friends. And uh, I felt, I felt a wee bit of responsibility that I had to do something because the many people that I spoke to and, and I mentioned Morris's name and the response was usually, who? So if, that's what you, if that is your response then that's cool, that's not your fault. It's because Morris for some reason he's kind of fallen off, the, he's fallen away a wee, a wee bit, but he's generally accepted and regarded as being one of the three fathers of the folk world that we all live in. Morris and Hamish Henderson and Norman Buckingham pretty much started this whole thing, this whole movement, or whatever you want to call it, that we all live in. And the other two, their places are secure, they've got their statues in George Square, not so much Morris Blythman. So, <laughs> this is a kind of wee bit, in my attempt to sort of try and like redress that a wee bit. Probably what Morris is, his name will be remembered, and there's two guys out in California right now writing a paper on him, so people do remember him. But one of the things he'll probably be remembered most for was getting all the songs together for the very first anti-nuclear protests down at the Holy Lock in 1961 and they made an album of the songs that the dogs had written between them and it ended up getting bringing out over in America and Pete Seeger loved it. And it is, I mean, this is unashamedly political stuff, right? And it's unashamedly a little bit socialist, a little bit republican and a little bit nationalist as well because that was, that was the sort of the tools that he used. But it was never preachy, I hope that this isn't going to be preachy. It was politics with a little bit of fun and a little bit of joy and a little bit of slagging you off. And all. It was essentially, if you think the timeline, when Morris started writing these in the early 50s, which was 10 years before this was the week that was, which was 20 years before Monty Python, which was 30 years before Spitting Image. Right? It's that same sort of lineage that I think we're talking here. And then the very first nuclear submarine that sailed up the Holy Lock was called the Proteus. And there was a bunch of young men and young women decided to form a welcoming committee. And they get in all their wee boats, their wee dinghies, and their wee canoes, and whatever else. Oh, all the... And they sailed out to meet this nuclear sub coming up the Clyde, and they formed a welcoming committee. Now, how brave! You know, how, how brave and how wonderful. And legend has it that the captain, whose name was Captain Lanning, looked down his nose at this and he referred to them and he said, we're being attacked by the Glasgow Eskimos. <laughs> right? All these wee folk in their pack of jackets and their canoes. Right? He thought that he was slagging them off by calling them the Glasgow Eskimos. Little did he think that Morris Blythman would look at that for about a little while and say, well, do you know something? The Eskimo, and I know the Eskimo is now a loaded term and it's maybe not PC and all the rest of it, right? But in no way was it ever used as a criticism or as a belittling term. If anything, Morris looked up to the Eskimo and he said, they have lived on both sides of the Iron Curtain. They have lived in every northern nation. They live in peace, they live in harmony. They have never had an arms race, never mind starting a war. They managed to make the laws that they all agree on. They managed to feed each other. They managed to live in harmony. We in Scotland should aspire to be like the Eskimo. So when Morris sings about the Eskimo Republic, it's Scotland that he's talking about. <laughs> No good fortune swing. It is tongue and run, and a nation rises that once was done, so it's time to sing. A revolution for the Eskimo great public. Where there is no class, there is no boss, no kings nor queens, and that's no loss. And we get boost up for the six months loss in the Eskimo great public. One line that needs a little bit of explanation. You get boozed up for a six months <laughs> DOS. Morris, I think it might be fair to say, liked the drink. And he took it on that if you get to sleep for six months, you can get pished for six months. So 
Zu die Geldbüßlaub für das sechs Mann's Dorfs, es war da uns auch weg. But the Eskimo, they all live in peace. They have never joined in an arrow's race, so no fight may trace of a triton base in the Eskimo Republic. And when they make a law, you know they all agree, because they all sit on the same committee, so they need no laws. And many MPs in the Eskimo Republic, where there is no class, there is no boss. Me kings, not queens, and that's the loss. And we get boosted up for the six months thus in the Eskimo Republic. The Eskimo, they're no like me and Luke. For the three Eskimo, he's got his king and Luke. I am the mother-in-law, she's got a neck Luke too. In the Eskimo Republic, and when I Eskimoen goes to the Eski school. He sits up straight on his Eski stool and he sings and he laughs, but he learns the rules of the Eskimo Republic. Where there is no class, there is no boss, no kings nor queens, and that's no loss. And you'll we'll get boosted up for the six months thus in the Eskimo Republic. Sings an esky sign, he gives it the real old esky twang, and his favourite one is a line to the Eskimo Republic. And now the Eskimos, they're all gay and gallus, the mere clues are like a right wee palace, or they're all left up by the Aurora. <laughs> In the Eskimo Republic, where there is no class, there is no boss, no kings, no queens, and that's no loss. And you can do stuff for the six months, thus. In the Eskimo Republic, where there is no class, there is no boss, no kings, no queens, and that's no loss. And you get boosted up for the six months, thus. In the Eskimo Republic.